So in our last video, we learned how to create a half section and fusion using this example. In this video, I want to do something similar. I want to show how to create an offset section and fusion using this example. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with a new sketch on the front plane. And let's grab our rectangle tool. And starting from the origin, I'm going to give this a width of three inches. I'm going to hit my tab key on my keyboard and I'm going to give it a height of 1.5 and hit enter. Then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again and I'm going to draw a rectangle off the origin again, a little bit smaller. This time I'm going to give it a width of 0.5 and a height of 0.75 and hit enter. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other end off the bottom right corner. Let's draw a rectangle and again 0.5 by 0.75 and hit enter. And we could trim off these bottom two rectangles, but there's really no need. I'm just going to hit finish sketch and hit extrude and select just this center sort of T shape. And let's extrude it 1.5 inches. And so if we look what's next, the next thing I want to sketch out are these holes in this top face. So we got two here and two here. So let's start a sketch on the top face. I'm going to zoom in here. And let's start with just a circle on the top left. I'm going to give this circle a diameter of 0.25. And let's just draw another circle at the bottom. And I'm not going to give it a dimension. I'm going to right click and hit OK. And I'm going to find my equal constraint and just tell these circles to be equal. I'm also going to tell the center of these circles to be vertical using my horizontal vertical constraint. That way, if I move one, it moves the other. Okay, so then I'm going to give it a dimension from the center of my circle to the edge of 0.25. And I'm going to do the same thing from the center of the circle to this edge to also be 0.25. And then the only thing I have left is I want this to be from this edge, 0.25 as well. And these two circles should be fully constrained. Now, if we look at this shape, we can see, well, this is sort of a half circle here. And so let's take advantage of that. Since I already have these two circles here, I'm just going to put these two circles over here as well. And so I'm going to right click and hit cancel. I'm going to go to construction lines and select my line tool and I'm going to find the center of this shape and draw a construction line straight down. Then I'm going to go to create mirror and I'm going to select these two circles to mirror across this plane. If we move it over, you can see, okay, I'm creating these two circles and I hit okay. Then I'm going to select my line tool and I'm going to turn off construction lines and I'm going to just draw a line from this circle to the edge and again from this circle to the edge and from this circle to the edge as well and this circle to the edge okay and it might already be fully constrained if you gave it a tangent and a perpendicular constraint or a tangent and a horizontal if it's not constrained that means either a you didn't tell the line to be horizontal or B, you didn't tell it to be tangent with the circle. And you can see on this one, I actually missed both. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell these two to be tangent as well. So either you have to add those constraints after the fact or you don't, but now they're all on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch. I'm gonna go to my home view. I'm gonna hit extrude and I'm gonna cut out these four shapes all the way through and hit okay. Next, I'm going to start another new sketch on this face. And I'm going to find my slot tool. And I want my center to center slot. And so I'm just going to draw two points and then drag it up. And I can change the dimensions of all of this. So let's see here. I'm going to tell this center line to have a dimension of one inch. I'm also, let's right click and hit cancel. Let me drag this over just a little bit here. 
I'm also going to give the outer circle here a radius of 0.5. And I want this centered in the middle. So I'm going to right click and hit cancel. And let's see here. I'm going to go to create point and I'm going to find this center of this edge right here and put the point down, right click. Okay. And I'm going to tell this point to be horizontal with this point. Right click OK. And you can see I can still move it left and right, but I can't move it up and down anymore. And actually, I'm going to do something very similar with this edge. I'm going to go to Create Point. I'm going to find the center of this line and the center of this edge. Right click OK. And again, horizontal vertical constraint. I'm going to tell these two points to always be vertical with each other. And I'm going to right click and hit OK and finish sketch. Let's go to our home view. I'm going to hit extrude and select my slot. I want it to go down negative 0.2. So that's good right there and hit OK. And then lastly, I just need to add these two holes, which if I look at my hidden lines, I can see go all the way through. So that should be quick and easy. I'm going to go start new sketch, select this face. And I want these holes actually centered with these two arcs here. So I'm going to go to create project and select project. And I'm going to project these two arcs for myself and hit OK. So now I have those centers to myself here. I'm going to grab my circle tool. I'm going to tell this to be 0.25 and I'm going to grab a circle tool again and I'm going to type in 0.25. I could have just given it no dimension and told it to be equal if I wanted to, but it's a little bit faster this way, I think. And then I'm going to hit finish sketch and extrude these two circles once again, all the way through and hit okay. And I think we pretty much have this shape done. So I'm going to go to save. And I'm going to tell this one to be called offset section example and hit save. And then from here, I'm going to go to design drawing from design. And once again, I want to make sure my personal drawing template is selected and hit OK. And if you have base selected, you can just start putting it down. If you don't, go ahead and select right here. But I'm going to go ahead and change the scale to one to one. And I'm going to change my orientation to my top view. And I want to put it over here at the top left corner. And I don't want hidden edges selected this time. Let's go ahead and turn hidden edges off. So let's just select visible edges and hit OK. And I think I put it a little bit too far to the top left. So I'm going to click it and drag it down just a little bit more. So it's not so close to that corner. But next I want to put down my section view. And so let's look and see where it goes. Well, if we look, we can see that our section view goes through this hole, then past it a little bit, then it turns up and goes through, then turns up after the slot and goes through again. And so let's see if we can't recreate that. So I'm going to select section view and I'm going to select my top face. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And so how do I find that center? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over that center point until that little green mark pops up and I'm going to drag to the left so that I can see my green arrow. And I'm going to click and drag not to the circle, but actually through the circle just a little bit. And I'm going to click again. And I'm going to drag up. But again, how do I know when to stop? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over this mark until that little green mark pops up. And then you can see, well, now I have this little green line coming out. And so I can make sure that it's perfectly centered when I click. And I'm going to drag it through here. And I don't want it to go all the way to past the circle here. So I'm going to go maybe to about, let's zoom in a little bit, maybe to about right here and drag up. And once again, how do I know where to stop? Well, I'll hover over one of these points until that little green mark pops up and then you'll know that you're centered in there and I'll click and drag to the right and click again and right click and hit continue. And then we should be able to drag down our offset section. And so I'll go ahead and click and hit OK. 
and you can see we created our section AA. I'm going to drag this up just a little bit, and then we just need to put down our side view and our isometric view. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll go to base view, select right side, tell it to be one to one, and then let's put it right over here. Try to get it as uh, close to center as possible here. It looks like I can actually hover over the center of that line and drag it to the right so that I know that it's centered. That's convenient. And then I want visible and hit it. I just turned on on this one and hit OK. And let's see. I also want my home view. So I'm going to go to base one more time. Go to home. Tell it to be one to one. And for this one, I want shade it turned on. I'm going to place it right here and click OK. And so you can see we sort of created this shape. And it's not exactly perfect. There's a couple of details, but that's OK. It is, in general, this shape. And so let's talk about what's going on with this offset section here. So this cutting plane line changes directions in a couple of places and then cuts out this piece and then looks at it from the inside. So if we want to demonstrate that, we can go back into this shape here. And we can start a sketch on this top face. And let's see, I'm going to grab my line tool. I'm going to find the center of this circle and just drag to the left. I'm going to drag it down. It doesn't really matter how far as long as it's past the shape. And then drag it to the right. And this by no means has to be perfect in this direction here. And then how do I know how far to drag it up? Well, I want to find that center to get that dotted line and then drag. I want to go past my circle and then drag it down. But how do I know how far? Well, I want that center. Drag it through. Click again, drag down, and then drag it into that shape. And there you go. We have a nice shape for ourselves. And so you can see this is doing the exact same thing as the cutting plane line. Why did I draw this rectangle down here? Just so I had a full shape to uh, extrude down with. I'm going to go ahead and go to finish sketch, hit my home view, and let's extrude that shape. So let's select here, here, and here, and drag it down. And what do we have? Well, we have that offset section. Let me see here. I'm going to hold control and select these faces that are not section view. So here and here. And I guess uh, I don't think that is actually part of it. And then these three faces as well. And so if we look, you can see the faces that I did not select would be my section views. And the faces I did select would be the faces that my extrusion here did not cut through. And so hopefully this gives you an idea of what this cutting plane line does. In this case, an offset cutting plane line. But let's go ahead and suppress that last feature just like before. And hit save and hit OK. That's going to ask us to update here. There's not much to update, so that's OK. Just go ahead and click that update button. And you might have to click it twice, and that's no big deal if you do. But we're done with this shape, so let's go ahead and save this as well. And we'll just call it the Offset Section Drawing Example Drawing. Make sure we're in the right folder and hit Save.